Welcome back to another brief kick-ass family call vlog where I will be inviting you to contact me urgently if you are about to write or submit a position statement. I am Philip Kedge, the kick-ass Mackenzie Friend, a retired police chief inspector, director of the brilliant Mackenzie Friend UK network and fearless family court information vlogger. Nothing that I say constitutes legal advice and I give family court support and information as an informed friend. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an irrebuttable truth that you don't need lawyers in the family court. They can't get you what you want. There is no advantage to having a lawyer. But they are brilliant at keeping you scared, anxious and disempowered in promoting conflict and transferring tens of thousands of pounds from your bank account into theirs. So with all that out of the way, let's do it. Now, if you are going through child arrangements, there are two main points in the process where you may be submitting a position statement. The first is in preparation for the first hearing dispute resolution appointment after receiving the CAFCAS safeguarding letter and the second is before a dispute resolution appointment after you have received a CAFCAS Section 7 report. Now I urge you to contact me for a case review before drafting and submitting your position statement. And this is why. Rarely do I see family court service users understanding the purpose of a position statement and what it should include and what it absolutely should not. And yes, I would suggest that a badly intentioned and worded position statement could make your life going through family court much worse. Without doubt, the biggest mistake I see reoccurring over and over again is when people use position statements to vent frustrations, to defend and explain their position to the death against allegations of abuse and harm, and to throw mud back at the other parent in a tit-for-tat battle of what's right and wrong that wouldn't look out of place in a school playground. It always surprises me how otherwise well-adjusted adults often holding responsible jobs, can quickly degenerate and regress into childlike conflicts, whilst the children caught in the middle have to act like the adults. You see, in so many cases, position statements are written and submitted in haste, fueled and driven by high emotions, frustrations and anger, reflecting an obvious dislike, contempt or even hate for the other parent. And approaching the family court in that way is almost always the worst thing that you can do, especially as the non-resident parent seeking to regain child contact. It is essential to understand that the primary consideration of CAFCAS and the courts is to explore and see all the issues, not from your perspective as the parents, but only from the perspective of the child in relation to what is known as the Child Welfare Checklist. CAFCAS and the courts must at all times consider the potential harm to the child, and what is always a significant concern is when the child is being caught up in the middle of parental conflict. So, the second you press that send button with a statement fueled by emotions, anxieties, allegations, assertions and personal opinions that you believe are child-centric but clearly are not, the only thing that Kafkas and the court will determine is not whether your emotions and feelings and opinions are right, but instead will rapidly come to the conclusion that the child is caught in the middle of adult conflict. And you have now potentially made your life as the non-resident parent trying to re-establish contact far, far more difficult and challenging. So why is it that the resident parent can submit a position statement full of anxieties, mudslinging and hate when it is very unwise to respond in a similar manner 
as the non-resident parent? Well, because the resident parent already has the child and they have nothing to lose if their aim is to try and reduce, restrict, minimise or deny child contact with you. The reality is that the family court spotlight is on you as the non-resident parent, the one seeking contact, where the question for CAFCAS and the court is whether it is safe for the child to be allowed to have contact with you. So the more you engage back in mudslinging and emotionally charged arguments, assertions and allegations, the more CAFCAS and the court may conclude that it's not safe resulting in any progression towards child contact becoming drawn out for potentially months and months on end with the additional nightmare scenario that you may actually inadvertently help to trigger which is a dreaded fact-finding hearing which could be a complete and utter disaster for you. I would also suggest that drawing the non-resident parent into tit-for-tat Conflict is a tactic frequently used by the all-too-often-sick-in-the-head family lawyers because they know that any conflict can then be used to slow down the progression of contact. And of course, creating conflict generates greater financial gain. Remember, family lawyers have absolutely no professional duty of care towards any child. How disgraceful is that? I have spoken with so many people who have turned to me for a one-to-one -one case review just before a hearing and who have sent me their position statement as a pre-read. Usually one of the first things I say is, please don't tell me that you have submitted this statement. And when they say, yes, I have, my heart sinks because they are now on the back foot and the case review is now about damage limitation rather than trying to find the positive path forward. And the confusing thing about these conversations is that when I explain just how unhelpful and utterly dreadful their position statement is, they agree and say, I know, but I thought I was doing the right thing at the time. I submitted it in haste vented my frustrations, but now looking back, I regret it. Please, Phil, can you help me? So, I have a clear and very direct message for you today. If you are about to write and submit a position statement to the Family Court for child arrangements, please stop and contact me today for a one-to-one -one case review with myself to firstly discuss your case and secondly, to ask me to help you to draft your position statement with the correct tone, intention and information that makes you look like a responsible parent and not the one fighting in the playground. That case review with myself could be the most important consultation that you ever have. You can contact me today for your one-to-one -one case review at contactfield.co.uk and where I can also find you a trusted McKenzie friend from the McKenzie Friend UK network for ongoing support. Until next time, I'm Phil Kedge, the kick-ass McKenzie friend.